I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today I get to bring you one of my favorites. Her name's Ashley Frederick. She is from Wisconsin. And I mean, if you can't see her encouragement just coming off of every ounce of her being, you're missing out. So wait till you hear a little bit of insights from what she's seeing in the market. Hear about her successes and how you could learn from that. And most importantly, I'll see you on the other side. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Sorry, I'm a couple minutes behind, but I'm totally going to get caught up on my day eventually. I know how that goes. <laughs> I like how we matched today. We didn't even plan discussing our black with our very well coiffed hair. <laughs> Great minds think alike. So welcome to the show. Tell my audience a little bit about who Ashley Frederick is. What do you do? Where are you located? Give us a little bit of the thumbnail. Sure. Ashley Frederick, and I am out of central Wisconsin. So I always tell people if you look at a mitten, we're like right in the middle of the mitten because Wisconsin looks like a mitten. I've been in real estate for 12 years. The first eight, I was just a realtor. And then the last four, um, broker owner of a local franchise. We opened March of 2020. So <laughs> very interesting time to open a brand new franchise. But here we are four years later, and we have nine agents, two staff. This last July, we were able to purchase a building and remodel. And now we're in our downtown. It's been fantastic. We have this great little plaza behind us. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, my husband is a contractor. So we also do um, flips and specs and rental properties. And then the kind of the other leg is I'm the chief strategy officer and coach under Leading Lane. So we do social media awareness and courses, coaching, consulting, masterminds, podcasts that we'll have you on in a couple of weeks that we're looking forward to. So all things real estate. So you're married to your contractor. This feels like the most uh, biggest advantage in the marketplace because if there's one thing good realtors can't find, it's a freaking contractor to do some repairs on a house. And I bet yours does your work first. <laughs> yes. And lots of times he gets pulled in, you know, because it's even the work can't get done. So we need an estimate. So someone always happens to be able to hop in. I pull a lot of favors, unfortunately. I mean, look, is it, we don't put anything past us when we got to make something come together. So no judgment here. But I do want to hear about your transition from being an agent to being a broker. What drove you into the ownership and management space from the sales space? Is that where your organic talents are? Were you bored by selling or did you just feel you had a, a better way to do it? I think I, it was really a better way to do it. You know, when I was the top producing agent in that office, and I think that if you kind of look at the history of like, right, people moving into brokerage, a lot of times it's a top producing agent that moves into the brokerage. Um, but I'll be honest, it was just some of like the technology I wasn't feeling. I wasn't feeling any actual support. Um, and I felt like other people were already coming to me for help on transactions and ways to do these types of things. Uh, so it was kind of a, a whim that our husbands were actually talking, my business partner and I. And literally joked like you guys should start your own office and we were ah, too funny and we interviewed a couple of franchises and you know next home is the franchise that we are with and it just felt everything felt perfect and it was just kind of the next thing but i think it was really about and i think you could probably relate like working with agents in your market that on you understand aren't getting the training and they're getting the training more or less from you. So I guess my thought was, why not, why not try to reach people on a larger basis to have agents learn from me so that when I'm doing transactions, like I'm doing it with people that have learned the right way to do transactions, the right way to treat people. I mean, that is the secret sauce to training. And I get asked that question, and why would you train your competitors? I'm like, because it makes real estate better. And we have to think about how the transactions you do with a skilled agent are a joy, and then you have a transaction with somebody who has no desire to be skilled, it is not joyful at all. It is not at all full, and you're lucky to get to the other side because not everybody has the same focus and mindset on real estate. So yeah, spread that out and, and help it grow. And you did affiliate with a brand that I respect very much because even though I'm an independent, I admire so much that James Dwiggins, your CEO, is out there leading a lot of the intellectual conversation around real estate. And you're very fortunate to have that kind of leadership because we just don't see it very many places anymore. 
Well, and that's kind of what I've talked about too, is just, it's been difficult, if you will, to lead from the front because our local market is really struggling with the changes. I'll be honest in the fact that I felt like 60 days ago, they didn't even know there were changes coming up. They still don't. There's still a bunch <laughs> of them that logged into MLS yet. So oh, 18 so to 24 it, months before we fully integrate the industry. Yeah. So it's been really tough. So for me, it was just, we were grateful to have someone like James that was very much in tune. So I always try to tell people too, like sometimes you're someone's broker before you're their broker. And so by trying to lead them and explain to them why these changes happen, you know, it's a great recruiting tool just so that we are staying above, you know, the rest of what's going on. And it's hard not to lose your temper, at least, you know, for me, I get the frustration starts to grow a lot when I'm dealing with somebody who is arguing with me about the changes, even though this person has not been nearly as involved as I have. And I work hard to keep my words under control. Y'all know that's one of my... (laughs) Well, my big flaws, I cannot stop running my mouth. Okay, so you opened your firm at the beginning of COVID. I went independent at the beginning of COVID. Best timing ever, as it turns out. Who knew? But what was the the hardest moment for you in making that transition, leaving aside the wildness of the COVID era? As far as just the opening the new new office? Any of that. You transitioning your messaging to your past clients that I am, you know, opening a firm here, going to transition my role somewhat, or the actual recruiting piece, or the yeah. management of the brand. What was the surprise challenge you encountered? You know, I actually think it went a lot smoother. I also still sell, so I think that helps tremendously. It helps people kind of move over. I think really what it was is just being like a new look to people and a new something they've never heard of. It's almost like I. I started over like being a baby agent for people that weren't aware, like, oh, like you're just new to real estate when in all reality, no, I've been in real estate for eight years. This is just a new look, if you will. But we already had a strong following, both my business partner and I on our, on our second day, we were able to recruit my a former team or team, team member of mine. So that worked out really well that there were three of us that have well-known agents, you know, to be able to. But I think it was really then just, and I think that's when you know, at the very beginning, we didn't even know if we'd be able to keep our doors open. Are we going to be shut down? Are we considered essential? Not. But then I think it was just a matter of making people understand that we're here to stay. So I think some people, when they see these pop up independents or other franchises, and they, we've had others here in the town, right? Like they stay for a year and then they're gone. So I think it was really just making sure that the community knew that we were here to stay. Uh, I think we've done a really good job of that, especially now in this last um, year purchasing a building. I mean, that was really my main message to people is we're here to stay and serve the community. What town are you in specific? Marshfield. Marshfield. Oh, my gosh. I had a friend from Marshfield. He's he's dead now. But I used to sell chainsaws. I worked for Husqvarna and Iowa was my territory. And one of our Wisconsin reps was from Marshfield. Wow. But this is 30 years ago. And he put me to my first Packers game in January. <laughs> but I was going to dive cold. So, oh my gosh. I think that's the first time I've heard of Marshfield in 30 years. Because it's obviously not a Milwaukee, Madison, no. Green Bay. We're a, we're a town of 20,000. But it's important to know that in a town of 20,000, A, there's plenty of real estate to run a successful business, but B, your longevity does matter because small towns like to chatterbox and they know exactly what's going on everywhere. Now, did Wisconsin go locked down with real estate or were you always considered essential? We're considered essential. Oh, so that's good. So you didn't have some of the drama that other areas did, which we're still trying to figure out, you know, What we've learned from that, and I'm not sure we learned a whole lot, but that's a whole different discussion. Yeah, the video tours was like one of the biggest things for us, turning over video tours for people that couldn't come but and still bought houses. That was probably one of our biggest changes in real estate. I hated those, and I still hate them because I I mean, I know I'm an old person who's been in real estate a long time, but there's something about watching a person walk into a house, and they either connect with the house or they don't, and... When people buy houses sight unseen, I mean, we can tell them every material fact and we can show them around the house, but there's a, there's an emotional connection to real estate that I just don't think people have grasped, especially as you look at the 
after effects of the lawsuits and the articles, all this chattering about real estate can be bought online. I'm like, y'all don't understand. It, it, I guess you could buy it online, but it might be the right house because you don't know till you feel it. Right. Yeah. I remember like many walkthroughs, final walkthroughs would be the first time that they saw the house. And I would just be like, please like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we had all good luck. Like most of them were more than excited. Uh, but still, like it was just such an unknown of like, what if it's not the right one? And you feel horrible that you helped them find a house that they didn't necessarily love. So that was probably one of the craziest things for me. I mean, with the upswing in the market, people were still doing all right. But as we move into a more stabilized market, there won't necessarily be a giant equity upswing no matter what, right. which the agents who don't know what's happening with the lawsuits and the MLS changes are also the ones that are going to be shocked and surprised as the market normalizes. And you're in a, a small town in a Midwestern state. So that means your market by traditional standards may settle a little bit as the markets get choppy and it may go up some, but it's not going to experience the wild swings of an Austin or a Phoenix. How right. do you convey to your neighbors what's happening in your market right now as it's slightly quieter than it was 12 months ago? We've been pretty lucky in that it's been steady. So our higher end market is actually what's struggling, which used to be the really, you know, COVID times that over 400, which is higher end in our area. I think that's, I think we have maybe like 20 houses for sale in that, which is super uncommon. You know, I just try to explain to people that's also where pricing comes into play because these sellers and some agents are still trying to play like last summer's numbers, but it's really a matter of being upfront. And, you know, I tell people like, I'm brutally honest. So I'm going to tell you what you want to hear and what you maybe don't want to hear. And if we're going to overprice, we're going to sit. But I think, you know, a lot of people are misconfused or, you know, um, not sure of how the lawsuits play. And they're very like, you can't, I can't, you can't show my house anymore. I don't have to pay you any commission. I'm paying you a lot of commission. So we've just been trying to educate and educate and educate, which is hard because then you have another realtor that follows right behind you. And I'll be honest, <laughs> someone just told a potential seller of ours that they had to sign a buyer agency for life. Like once they signed a buyer agency agreement, it was good forever. For life? For life. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's real estate commission reporting level bad. Oh, we have lots of uh, real estate commission reporting things going on here that I shake my head every single day. So right, thankfully, my agent came and told me and we were able to talk that seller through, literally showed them the contract of where it says termination option, I beginning date. This. Who has the cojones to tell a consumer, Realtor for Life is not just a marketing slogan, it's in a contract, you're stuck with me until I'm dead or you're dead, what? Isn't that sad? I mean, yeah, I mean, we talk about crazy shit. I mean, I could go on with all kinds of the <laughs> violations in the last 30 days. I mean, okay, I'll give you another one. It's a good one. We just had a seller, an agent of mine, they listed. And um, another agent called them after it was listed to tell them that we underpriced it. No, no they didn't lie. <laughs> they did. Okay, that's a violation of the code of <laughs> ethics. That's a violation of real estate commission. That's a violation I, of everything. What are we doing? So this is where I like we struggle, I think, in these small towns is that we're so far, we're not thankfully because of our franchise, I feel, but all of these other ones are so far removed from what is actually kosher. I feel like we actually spend the majority of our time like in like your face. Like when my agents call me, I'm like, I am sorry, what? And you know, and it's like, I think that people used to just kind of put that under the rug. And again, it comes back to me, which I train my agents, like we're leading from the front. So I know it's really hard to file a code of ethics and it feels like this weird, you know, whatever, but we're never going to change the industry if we don't. Thank you. And it, I, I'm always amazed. I can ask a classroom full of agents who knows of an agent who's currently violating the code of ethics and two thirds of the hands go up. And I say, how many of y'all turned them in? The hands come right back down and they don't want to get boycotted in the market. They don't want their clients harmed. And I, I get that fear. But to your point, if you don't police it, it means nothing. Right. Right. That means we're all, the rest of us are working our tails off for what reason. And that's how the realtor brand still it's a bad name is because we're letting these things slide. And so that's been really 
tough and it because we are a small town. But again, I just keep on telling the agents, like, if you're not comfortable, then tell me and I'll do it. And I, we've had to push our local MLS a little bit because a lot of times it's, well, I'll just call them and let them know that they can't do that next time. And I was like, no, that it's, that's not how that works. <laughs> I still can't believe somebody had the nerve to ask for a lifetime agency. This is <laughs> all day to process this. But I'm also thinking about the new rule where the DOJ has pushed into the settlement that the consumer has to sign something before they walk into a house. How many consumers would meet that agent and say, I'm just looking at Elm Street and not read it, not have it explained, initial sign, now they're trapped. And uh, so that is happening. They're, they're stuck and that agent is going to get away with it until somebody takes them to task. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had that quite a few where we've had, you know, like have, if they call, we'll ask, like, have you seen properties? Have you signed something? Yeah, I mean, I signed something before I walked in the property, but I don't know what that was that I signed. I've run into that, too. And I talked to a consumer who said, it was just to let me see that one house. And I said, are you sure? And so they pulled up the document and it was an exclusive buyer agency agreement for a year, which I thought was extreme. But now I know it wasn't a lifetime. So they got off easy. <laughs> And I had to tell this person, like, I can't help you now that you are contracted with this agent. I cannot help you. But how do I get out of it? I said, I can't answer that because I would be in violation of the code of ethics. Yep. I can't help you now. I wish you all the best. And I wish I could tell them you got bamboozled. Go knock on the door of the brokerage and demand your freedom. And I can't do that because that itself would be a violation of our code of ethics, which I guess maybe we're going to have to revisit how all that sits because somebody's got to tell the consumer. Yeah, because I mean, not everyone is and then they're stuck. And again, that goes back to, are we really serving our clients then our customers when we didn't explain to them? And then, I mean, I'll be honest, that client was really upset. And I'm sure yours was too, as to far as or the customer that, what do you mean I signed this? That's not what I agreed to. And it just, it's just really unfortunate, I think, for the industry. So if you're in real estate and you're listening to this podcast or watching it and thinking, man, I need some more Lee Brown answers in my life. Well, guess what, friends? I have a new program that is launching right now called Answers.RealEstate, where I will give you every bit of insight I have to help you grow your real estate business, help you better respond to consumers to provide a more excellent real estate experience so that the next time you land on crazy shit in real estate, you'll have a better solution to whatever you ran into. Answers.real estate. There are monthly plans available. You will love it. Get your coaching. Sign up with me today. Well, and people say realtors don't read the RDR. Now we can say people don't read PDR. So y'all read things for you sign, especially yeah. on the sign where your in, your tendency is to click or yeah. your Apple terms of service agree. You don't read what you gave Apple access to your life and you didn't even <laughs> read it. I don't read it either. I'm not better than anybody, but this is this is uncharted territories that we're heading into. And to the point you made about the continuous education of agents, I have talked to several MLS execs and their phones every day. They get a phone call. Where'd the compensation field go? Where'd the commission field go? Because they're so divorced from news. And I can even understand that because the news cycle right now yeah. with the election year and with the economy is exhausting and noisy. Yeah. So maybe they missed all the real estate stuff because they're focused on something else. and. Knowing that 65% of realtors and consumers, you might not know this, but 65% nationally of our one and a half million realtors did between zero and one transactions in the last 12 months. That's a vast majority did maximum one transaction, most of them zero in the last 12 months. That's why they don't know what's going on, but their cousin wants to buy and suddenly they log back in to be shocked by it. And those of us that do real estate every day are going to be in continuous educator mode and what an opportunity to fix our professionalism problem if we look at it that way. We have to choose to look at it that way, I guess. Oh, a year's, a lifetime's worth of buyer agency. I am still can't get over this because I don't know how long I'm going to live. I don't know how long <laughs> my clients are going to live. I don't want to be attached to some people for life, Ashley. I mean, I some people I can barely make it through, but not <laughs> I disclosed last week, girl, I love you. We're going to be friends forever, but some of these people. Oh, not all of them. Okay, so anyway, in Wisconsin, in a town of 20,000, people might think there's less crazy real estate in a smaller town than there is in a giant big city. But something tells me that you have come to the podcast today with a fun story to tell, Ashley. So what did you bring for the listeners and viewers? 
Well, there's all kinds of fun things, but it's not so crazy. But it actually, I wanted to go back to when I came to your camp. And hopefully you remember, and I've come a long way, I think, since then. But I think what it goes down to, <laughs> yes, it is much longer. And I remember telling you crazy stories then, and you were shaking your head about our association and the RPAC and all of those fun things that we'll talk about at some point in time, too. But I mean, I do have a really crazy move out story, but I do just want to go back to what you had told me to talk about, which was, you know, only realtor in the room. I remember that you were like, we're going to hashtag that and you're going to do all this. <laughs> It's so good. Yes, it is. And I think it's not just small town. I think it's everywhere. I see on all of these online groups, people keep on talking about or asking, how can I get leads? What leads can I pay for? Where can I find these leads? Like, And it's every day, like in every single real estate group, and people are always asking, like, where are you paying for them? And I always just want to write back, like, yes, it's sphere, but like, show up. Like you need to show up places, not online. Like, yes, there's a point of being online and doing your videos, but I cannot stress to people the amount of just going to association meetings, like going to, you know, functions in your town. Like I went to one last night and there was only one other realtor there. And I walked away with, I never go there for the intention, but I walked with, away with somebody that wants me to come look at their house to list. And then somebody that wants to purchase a property they saw pop up last week. Had I not gone there, I wouldn't have met the two people like they know who I am, but they're like, oh, I've been thinking about calling you. Haven't seen them for a while. And it's just a matter of that's how be, you become top of mind is that you're everywhere, wherever there's a business after five or there's a um, movie in the park or whatever, even if it's for 15 minutes, like your face is your brand. So you have to be seen. And I still keep on, you know, hammering on that. And it's still true to this day. So, I, I mean, I thank you for helping me work through that. And it's so true as far as people that are looking for, ways to grow their business. I mean, perfect I, message. And when we say the that phrase only realtor in the room and I still think it's the the perfect catchphrase. You can have your little merch set up because yeah. people will totally wear that merch if it looks cute. But you think about it, we have one and a half million realtors right now. And we have double that if you count just licensees that don't belong to the trade association, that don't do code of ethics or any of that. And you still go to an event and there's still only two of you. Yeah. I was at an event on Sunday and there were about a hundred people there and I was the only realtor in the room. And I'm thinking, I, I'm i grateful for every opportunity I get. I will never stop being grateful for it, but I'm still thinking, damn people, it's right. not hard. It just, it's just hard because nobody wants to do it. It takes effort. Right. I mean, and <laughs> I think that's just it. And that by going to these events, like, it's just one, it's a great way to reconnect with past clients if you haven't seen them for a while, but you almost always meet someone new, right? I think we were at a business after five and a past client of mine was like, oh, I really wanted you to meet my friend. Uh, she tried to sell a house last year and it didn't work, right? Like emailed her the next day, sold her property. I mean, like, it's just so simple. And I think that we overcomplicate things in general, right? I mean, like <laughs> with what's going on in lawsuits, et cetera, but it's not all this, we need to dump thousands of dollars into lead spends, right? It's just be yourself and be seen. I mean, I wish it were something more complicated. I guess we can call this episode either silver bullet because every agent is looking for that silver bullet on lead generation or a silver bullet on growing the business. But in reality, it is about being the only realtor in the room. And that's probably going to get easier because as we go through the challenges of what's changing in real estate and add on top of that, the economy is in a really rough spot, even though it's seldom acknowledged in the media right now, it's going to be very evident before too long. We are going to see realtors that say, this is too hard. I give up. And as they give up and step back, my hope is that they will be replaced with great people who are willing to be the only realtor in the room. Because when you're there to talk to the friend of your friend, you're bringing her solutions. Like she didn't know what to do next because her house didn't sell. Because I'm sure on Facebook, it looked like her house should have sold in five minutes according to all her Facebook friends, but it didn't. She needed the encouragement and the expertise, which you can provide. But if you weren't there, who would she have called? Right. Hopefully, I mean, and it's just, it's every day. You know, I, I think that, and I, when you think about a realtor, right? Like my 
pieces like community, like realtor equals community, which means you have to be a part of your community. And those in your merch line, by the way, that's a great shirt. Yeah. Yes. You know, and it's just, I think it's not that hard. And I know like sometimes I feel like I'm a introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. Like, right. Sometimes you're tapped out from people because we see it all, but I always, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go for five minutes, five minutes. Right. It always ends up that you're there for 45 minutes and, you know, met a couple people and you're like, okay, well, that was worth it. I'll do it again. I love that you said that though, because the hard part is going in the door in the first place when you're tired and maybe a little grumpy from dealing with an agent who made somebody sign a lifetime agency. <laughs> <laughs> you still had to suck it up and go to business after hours. And then it turns out to be a wonderful connector. And isn't that what we lost during COVID? Frankly, we lost our it is. hugs and our relationships and it's hard to get it going again. Well, and I think, you know, like our our core people are like our great people, right? But there's, I always tell people that my, the best thing about real estate for me is the people that you meet. And I always think like, had I not gone to this one event, I wouldn't have met this one client that is now one of my best friends, right? So you just never know who's out there on the other side that sure, they might have needed some real estate help. But then you end up feeling like you're like lost soul sisters, like had that never happened, right? And then it just keeps on compiling. And it's also, those are the people that keep me sane, I think. So when you do have these people that are super unappreciative, rude, right? And then like 20 minutes later, that awesome client that worships the girl and you walk on calls, you're like, this is why I'm doing this. That's another line for your merch. It could say some clients keep me sane. But we can't call out <laughs> because some clients make us nervous wrecks, but some of them do. And I love that. This is so, this is what I like a lot of agents need right now. They need to hear these words from you as a reminder that this is bigger than the lawsuit. Yeah. And this is it bigger is. than the commission discussions and bigger than the restructure of our multiple listing service. Cause what we do has nothing to do with any of those and everything to do with the connections, which turn into bigger connections. And it's, they do. it's so true. Like I, that's why we can't do any other job. Right. Well, and I, you know, you just think about like your clients and then like when you do become, like you become a part of who they are as far as, when there is a death, right? Like sometimes I've found out before some other closest friends have because, you know, they wanted to like make a business decision first. Like I need to talk to you before I talk to my family that's going to tell me a hundred other things, right? I mean, like the fact that now people consider calling you first when something major happens or, right, like you get to know when they're expecting and we're going to need a different size house. Like those are just such amazing things to be a part of. Um, and it's the really tough things too, you know, it's divorces or it's whatever, but being that sounding board and being able to bridge that gap for people, it's just a feeling that if we remember, that's why we're doing, this is why we're putting in all the hard work. We'll be fine. Everything will be fine. We'll get through all of these changes. If we continue to be, you know, humans over houses is as you know what next home says i mean and, and that's really what it comes down to is it's the human and the relationships that we're here for time and time again so now i'm thinking your hat your title might actually be the only trusted realtor in the room <laughs> talk about those life situations generally people are willing to share when they're expecting but yeah. when they are about to watch their family disintegrate into shreds they desperately need calm compassion empathetic care. And I think there's probably some people in our profession who forget how valuable the confidentiality is because they go to social media and say something flippant, forgetting that person's watching and then they know the stories about them. Yep. I always mm -hmm. have somebody ask me, like, why is your podcast all about other people's stories and not yours? Like, because I can't, I've told like one story and it's because it was in my family and it's, they're not my stories to tell sometimes, but yep should be learning experiences so that other people can trust us yes all right so ashley what's next for you so you're 12 years in you have a successful brokerage with enough agents to i mean honestly nine people makes a mark in a town of twenty thousand, especially when you own the real estate so yeah you whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah what are you going to do next to continue serving real estate to bring your your ability to wordsmith and your ability to connect with people to the next level. That's really where coaching comes in for me. I just think that the ability to, I have uh, currently two clients and there's something about watching people shift. I've been with both of them for about six months. And actually one of their brokers reached out to me uh, and said like, 
I, we cannot believe the change we've seen in her and our office, her attitude, her sales. She is like a different human. So I think that's where things start to change for me is I still do the day-to-day sales. I still run the brokerage, but I'm trying to find those ways to impact more people. And I think that's just the world we live in. It's full of negativity, as we know. And if we can find people that help keep us accountable, or what I've found is it's someone that's asked, like willing to ask you the hard questions, right? Because we're not going to grow if you can't find someone that pushes you a little bit or, you know, it's just even like doing video, like, and they say they're going to do video. And then I'll literally be like, Hey, haven't seen a video in a week. Like, where is it? You know? So for me, that's just trying to find people to impact on a larger level. And that's where some like with leading lane with some of the retreats and masterminds, it's just about how can we continue to reach the masses so that you are surrounding yourself with good, positive people, because, you know, as I've progressed, and uh, we've talked about, you know, like, being successful in a small town is very difficult as well, um, especially when it is what it is. But, you know, uh, a lot of, we joke, but like older white men struggle with that. Um, you know, it, it creates ruffles, but I'm trying to just lead the way. And then when you do things from the heart and you do it from the right way, like we actually help each other a lot more. So that's kind of where we go. You know, our brokerage is still growing. We are the number one real estate office in our town, which has been, yeah, the last, or this will be our third year. So pretty amazing to come from what we've done and people see it. So continuing to make that, you know, um, people just want to come in. Our office is bright. People love to come here. So continuing to be the place people want to go, but continuing to try to impact, you know, either on local levels, state levels or across states. So have you ever done a spiritual gifts assessment? No. Because tell me more. Like I'll send you a link to one because it's interesting. We often do the personality testing in real yes. estate, the DISCs or the Myers Briggs, the you know putting the letters together. And a lot of us haven't done the spiritual gifts assessment, which obviously applies to believers. But I feel like one of yours is probably encouragement. Yeah, and there's a lot to be said for that in a world that as you mentioned, is full of negativity, but especially in real estate where agents can silo into themselves really quickly, run into one bad client and self-implode. If want somebody there to bring them back to, hey girl, you got this. And there's a lot yep. to be said for having somebody in your corner, which obviously that's what you do for your clients in your community. So Ashley, if somebody wants to reach out to you and find out about your coaching, find out about your podcast, find out about how they can place a referral to you in Wisconsin, how do they find you? Best way is my cell phone number, 715-207-9300, but also over social media. And it's Ashley Frederick. I always tell people it's Fred, Rick, no E's, no S's, Frederick, but you can find me easily there and we can point you in the right direction. And friends, all of Ashley Fred Rick's information is going to be in the show notes for this episode because now I can never look at your last name the same way. But do you remember that children's book that was Frederick the Mouse? No. Oh my gosh. It was the, I swear, I can only remember half of things today. It was the author who did a whole series of books and they were, they were artistic. Oh my gosh, this is proof I'm an empty nester. My kids, I no longer read to them every day, but there's Frederick the Mouse and he I'm going to have to look it up. He dreams in colors, but if I'm not mistaken, he spells it like Frederick, but maybe it's Frederick. And then you'll have an, a book that's not your last name. I don't know where I just went with that, but look it up. It's a great kid's book. And um, if you're an empty nester as well, then you can absolutely hit me up in the comments and remind me of who wrote that book. But Ashley, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I cannot wait to see what you come up with next because I love your perspective and how you're able to reach people. And it's very much needed right now. Thank you, Lee. All right, friends, say something nice about Ashley in the comments. You can start with her hair, but then go into her brain. Make sure you hit the bell to subscribe. And most importantly, come back and see us next time. By the way, friends, don't miss my brand new coaching program at Answers.RealEstate, where you can have access to Lee Brown, submit your questions, have them answered, meet like-minded professionals, have an entire library to help you build your business no matter what happens in the market. Get signed up today. I promise you'll be glad you did. So if you found value in this episode, please like and subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell and catch another amazing episode by clicking above. Crazy Shit in Real Estate is also available on all of your normal podcast apps. 
So if that's where you like to hang out, go find me, click subscribe. And most importantly, leave me a review that says you think I'm awesome, my guests are awesome, or this content is just exactly what you were looking for. And then by the way, if there's something you need, you wanna learn about something, you can comment below anytime. You can also send me a direct message if you need to remain anonymous, no judgment. But anyway, I'll only judge if you forget to subscribe and click. I'll see you next time.